Good morning from the Southwest Coastal 300. Today I'm starting off in the village of Alloway, close to Air, and I'm here because this is the birthplace of Robert Burns, who is Scotland's national poet. Behind me you can see is the Burns Museum. The area that I'm in has lots of buildings and places associated with the man himself. The weather's nice, the sun's shining, so I'm gonna take a stroll around and see what I can find. Alloway. So this is a great little illustration of all the various things you can see in regards to landmarks associated with Robert Burns and I think what I'm going to do, I am here at the moment near the Burns Museum which is just behind me. I think what I'm going to do is take a walk along the poet's path up towards Burns Cottage where he was born. I'll take a walk back again and then past the church towards the monument, the Brigadoon, and then back to the car park. Turns out the poet's path is fairly easy to find. It's straight opposite the museum and along the path is a number of sculptures and monuments that are dedicated to Robert Burns and his work. One of which is a poem he wrote called Tam O'Shanter, which tells the story of Tam, who in his drunken state one night, I guess he'd been at the taverns and bars later than he should have been, he was walking home and stumbled upon a party involving witches, and he watches from afar. In his drunken state, he calls out to the witches and they end up chasing him towards a bridge which is close by the Brigadoon. They cannot cross the Brigadoon, but he can. I'll be visiting the bridge a little bit later on in my walk, so we'll be able to check that out a bit later. But for now, here is the poet's path. Just walking through the centre now of Alloway Village. Looks like a lovely little place. Lots of stone houses and old cottages lining both sides of the street. There's a little village post office right there in the centre as well, along with a convenience store. The population here is around 4,000 people and I am getting closer now to Robert Burns House. made it now to the Robert Burns Cottage. There is a car park here and a visitor centre. You can actually go in and have a look at the cottage from the inside. I'm not going to do that today, I'm just going to wander around the outside. This cottage was the birthplace of Robert Burns on the 25th of January 1759. It was built by his father two years prior to that out of mud and clay. Robert Burns lived here until he was seven years old at which point they moved to a house a couple of miles away. It is interesting to know that back in those days as many other families did they lived alongside their farmyard animals all under the one roof. When they moved out they sold the cottage to the incorporation of shoemakers and they leased it out as an alehouse. These days, as I said before, you can enter the cottage by visiting the museum section. You can see the entrance just over there. Adults are £11.50. My next stop is going to be the Old Kirk, or the Old Church. There is a gate here. I'm not even sure if it is... Ah, yes, there we go. It is open. <laughs> 
I was thinking there it may be locked. Close that behind me. And there we go, look at that, that looks incredible. There was a church here dating back to the 1200s, but this one is believed to have been built in the 1500s. It is ruined, by the way. So we'll have a closer look at it in a second, but it was believed to have been ruined when Robert Burns was growing up. And this is the inspiration for a lot of his spooky ghost filled stories and poems. Wow, look at that. And just in the foreground here actually is William Burns gravestone. So that is Robert's father. It's a little plaque here. This is the grave of Robert Burns father, William. Robert wrote the lines on the back of the stone. Okay, let's have a quick look. It's just starting to rain again. There we go. I won't read all of that, but if you want to check it out, then pause the video. Interesting stuff. Some super old graves here. Let's go and have a look at that church. I'll see if I can show you inside. Although I'm not sure you can actually get inside, but it is fascinating seeing these really old structures. In fact, if I come over here, you can see what I mean by the fact that it's ruined. So at the front there, the wall still stands. There's even a bell up there, which is incredible. But the rest of the roof has gone. Only the stone structure remains. Let's have a quick poke inside. There we go. Just around the back of the church now. If you are in the village, definitely come to this church. It is really, really interesting. Some old graves here. Let's see how far they go back. Someone here died 1852, so it's about 170 years ago getting on. Maybe some even older graves around here as well. As said, this is the back of the church now. There we go. See that wall still standing? And then just over here, this a dog, someone's garden, I think, through there. But there is, look at the size of this one. That is one heck of a memorial. It must be someone important buried there, erected to the memory of Lieutenant Ben John Hughes from Balkisok, who died at the Mount Charles. Wow. Looks like you can actually, probably shouldn't, but let's just, Oh wow, that is really heavy. That is really heavy. And yeah, you can actually see inside. I'm guessing his remains were scattered in here perhaps, or he is buried underneath. I don't know how it works. I've never seen the inside of one of these before. I've seen plenty of them in different graveyards as I've traveled around Europe. But that is just fascinating. Let me close that door again if I can. There we go. Let's close that a little bit more. There we are. Okay, and it is starting to rain a bit heavier now, so I think I'm gonna head off to my next stop. The rain has really started coming down hard, but I'm gonna try and continue the tour nonetheless, finding this really interesting, learning about Robert Burns and his life and his poetry. I am now at the Burns Monument and Gardens. So under the guise of a, an umbrella, trying to stay dry, let's see if we can go inside and have a look. Here we go, Burns Monument, erected 1820 to 1822. Original statues of Tam O'Shanter and Salter Johnny. Here we go, there is nobody on the gate. And as I come through, oh wow, <laughs> that's a lot more grand than I thought. Wow, I did not expect to see a piece of Greek architecture here in Ayrshire. Let me just step over here a little bit and I'll try and tell you 
if I can keep under the umbrella here, I'll tell you a little bit about it. So it has a triangular base and the three sides of the triangle face the three different areas of air shear. At the top there, you can see the Greek pillars. There's nine of those. Move the umbrella out the way. The nine Greek pillars represent the nine muses of Greek mythology. How about that? And then around the monument are lots of other smaller little monuments. Nice bench there. It is a, a garden, as I said, as well. So it isn't just the statue and actually Looks like the door is open, you can get inside. Crazy Scottish weather. Okay, let's have a look in here. I am echoing a lot. There is a sign here with a little bit of information on it. It is a spectacular place, no doubt about it. Look at that, a glass dome up there. And a very modest sized bust of the man himself. Robert Burns. He was born, as I said, in 1759, died in 1796. At the age of just 37, he died of rheumatic fever. I am going to head up here. Interestingly enough, there we go, the echoing stopped. Interestingly enough, the last of Robert Burns' children was born during his funeral service, or on the day of his funeral. We're gonna go back out into the elements, so I think I'm going to put the umbrella back up again. Looking up, I'm still under cover, so I'll refrain from using my umbrella for the time being, but there's that dome. What an epic memorial. There we go, there is a walkway that you can just stroll around and let's have a look at some of the views. By the way, I must say, although Robert Burns wrote many, many poems, one of the most famous that he wrote that was turned into a song, Old Lang Syne. Everybody must know that one, I would have thought. There we go, there's the memorial garden below me. Brigadoon over there. Some of the beautiful Ayrshire countryside. I think that's the sea out there. When chapel bellies leave the street, when drithy neighbours, neighbours meet, as market days are wearing late and folk begin to tack the gate, while we sit boozing at the nappy and getting few and unca happy, we think on the land Scots miles, the mosses, water, slaps and styles lie between us and our aim, where sits our sulky, sullen dame, gathering her brows like gathering storm, nursing her wrath to keep it warm. And I have made it down as the rain continues pouring to the Brigadoon. Here we go, looks like a spectacular bridge. Let's go and take a walk across it and I'll tell you about it as we go. It is believed to have been built in the 15th century by someone called James Kennedy. And in the 16th century, it was described as ruined, which is no surprise. It has been repaired many times over the centuries. Down there is the River Doon. As I said, the bridge is called Brigadoon, which translated to English means bridge over the River Doon. Quite a straightforward one. Over in this other direction, Oh look, is that an extension of the memorial garden down there, I wonder? Or is that someone's private garden? Probably the latter, based on that house in the distance there. Over there is the new bridge as well. So all traffic now goes over the new bridge. And it's got a very steep hump, this one has. Just reading up, it has a span of 72 feet and it has a rise of 26 feet. So it has a very sharp rise here in the center but it is definitely a cool place to be standing what a great couple of hours here in alloway having a look at robert burns and the history one more thing to show you that isn't related to robert burns but it is related to the road trip i'm on 
and I'll see you there in just a couple of seconds. Just a few miles outside of Alloway is the beach. It's literally taken me six minutes to get here in a car and I'm right next to the magnificent Greenham Castle, which dates back to around about the 12th century. But this tower building, which is all that's left of the castle now, sadly, was built in around about the 15th and 16th century, sometime around then. It is overlooking the sea the Isle of Arran is out there way, way in the distance. You can see these beautiful beaches down here. And if I turn the other way, you can make out the town of Ayr, which I was looking around yesterday. It is a fantastic place to be. We are high up on a sea cliff and this is where I'm gonna end the video. I know it's not much to do with Robert Burns, but I wanted to tell you that I am on a Southwest Coastal 300 road trip around the southwest of Scotland and I'm hoping to start the next video by driving from Alloway to Stranra and we'll see what we find along the route. I'll say thank you very much for watching my Robert Burns and Alloway video. Hopefully you found it as interesting as I did and I will leave you with one final shot of this magnificent beach and the town of Ayr in the distance. I will see you hopefully in the next video.